new tubes. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. You're in violation of secure communication procedures, Condor. So we just went ahead and fixed the glitch. There is no America. There is no democracy. Our fifth objective, a new world order. There are no nations. There are no nations. There are no Russians. There are no Arabs. There are no third worlds. There is no West. right wing conspiracy. What do you call it when the assassins accuse the assassin? A new world order. Thank you for plugging in to the Stones Unturned podcast. Well, just a second there, Professor. We, uh, we fixed the glitch. I'm your host, Professor Thomas Henry Horan. He reads everything. Hello there, you lucky devils. You better bet your bippies he reads everything. Happy Daylight Savings Time. Hi, Creepy Crawl. I was afraid nobody would show up. Hi, Adam. Hi, everybody. Hello, Sandusky. Hello, Curdeline. Hello, Oswego, Illinois. Hello, Flagstaff. Hello, Albuquerque. Hello, Corpus Christi. Hello, Baton Rouge. Hi, Anthony. Hello, Poughkeepsie. <laughs> Hello, uh, Scranton. Hello, Bakersfield. Hello, Dublin. Hello, Derry. Hello, London. Hello, France. <laughs> Hello, Oslo. Hello, Adelaide. Hello, Buenos Aires. Hi, John. I have lots of exciting news. South Florida? Hello, South Florida. You know what? I need a lozenge. It's too late now. No, it's not. Give me one second. Give me one second. I'll be right Okay, that's better. This won't go clickety-clack. Just had a little tickle in my throat. Oh, a stinking tree pollen. My allergy to these fucking fans has returned, you know. <laughs> From Slapshot. The real Slapshot. Some movies don't need remakes. Pre-record from the 5th. You want to see that? I didn't. There was nothing. That one was nothing. The 8th. The 6th and the 8th. The show from the 8th. I just realized this morning I forgot to press publish on the blog post. So you should be able to find that one. The last pre-record from the 5th. It should be there. Let me see. Actually, I could see it on here. Now, today, get logged into the, as many people as possible, get logged into the premium channel. Hi, Alard. Speaking of which, hi, Alard. Hi, Johnny Rotten. Hi, Plastic. You guys are going to see... <laughs> Give me one second. Let me answer one question at a time. 
Remember my custom-built player that I couldn't quite get to work with all the features we wanted and it had a lag? Not only have we solved all the server end problems, but the custom player that I had built, it just worked. It just worked like it was like the pieces just really came together. You'll see that today. But it's not running up and running yet. It's a tiny bit more complicated. It doesn't have to be, but there's really no point today because we got a couple months left on our restream subscription. So all technical problems have been solved. I can tell you that right now. Okay. So the episode from the 8th is up. Whoops. The episode from the 3rd is up. Yeah, the episode from the 6th. There's no pre-recorded episode. It was just a live stream, impromptu live stream. I think every episode worth watching is uploaded to the sub, to the premium channel, okay? Because that's the 8th, the 3rd, and then the 26th of February, and before that, the 18th of February. That was just blah, blah. That was all blah, blah, blah. I don't even remember what I blah, blah, blah about. It's probably recorded on Restream. I think I was just demonstrating... What's I? It wasn't worth... You'll see everything. Anything I talked about, you're going to probably see... If you didn't see it on Friday's show that I just now published this morning, um, you'll see it today or whatever. Yeah, no, no worries, Adam. Please. Sometimes I forget to... I do forget to... Usually I forget to hit the publish button. Here's the thing, Anthony. It was a low-budget movie based on a play. It looks like early television. I just thought from a technical standpoint, because anytime you watch those old movies from the 30s, it's always a scratchy old print. The sound is screwed up. Somebody really, somebody must have found an original negative you know, a complete negative of that movie, and they really put a lot of work into restoring it or whatever, because that was what the experience was like. You listen to it with headphones, you can hear the echo, you can hear their honest sound stage. Just from a technical standpoint, I thought it was an interesting video to watch. Yeah, because they were real hockey players. I think the only... Michael Lontkeen could play hockey. No, he wasn't Michael Lontkeen. Whoever played the main character. Because the real-life guy who wrote it, the real-life um, Braden, Ned Braden, right? He plays uh, uh, Ogie Oglethorpe. Because they were afraid to let Goldie Goldthorpe play himself because they were afraid he would deliberately hurt Paul Newman. So they wouldn't let him in. Yeah. Otherwise, and Paul Newman, he, he was a dancer. So he may have learned how to skate later in life, but he skates pretty well in that. I mean, he plays pretty good hockey in that movie. Every other... Every every other hockey player in that movie was a hockey player. Some of them had had played hockey and became actors, but they were all hockey players. And I think they did bring back some real goons from the past to to play in that championship game. Yeah, that was um just a really good movie. Paul Newman, just my God, what a what a star, you know, a great actor. He could really play that character. Michael Onkeen plays Ned Braden, right? The main, the main young character, right? 
Well, yeah, they. Was it? Hey, there's a the, the. Oh, there's a Charlestown Chiefs. But um, yeah, right. Johnstown and, and they talk about the Johnstown, the Charlestown flood, but it was really the Johnstown flood. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's a terrible movie, Anthony, but I thought it was really cool, a technical. So I'm thinking if they picked a movie that boring, they must have found an actual negative from which the prints were made. Yeah, I think they were all hockey players. The guy who played Morris, the really sleazy guy, he was a professional hockey player and he was born again Christian. And the director asked when he auditioned, he said, are, are you going to be able to play this character and say these things? And he said, well, it's the character who says and does these things, not me. And Hill said, okay. George Roy Hill is okay. And you can tell he loves playing that character. Um. Yeah, but the Hanson brothers were also, I think they played against Goldie Goldthorpe. Goldie made it to the NHL. He played several years in the NHL. He was a good player. He was the Kurt Rambus of, of his, you know, he was a goon who could play, right? Yeah, Goldie Goldthorpe. The thing is, have you ever seen Ernie Shore's face? <laughs> Those guys were just as rough and tough and mean. Kind of like he was run over by a bush hog several different times in his life. Or Toe Blake. Who's... Yeah, those guys look like... So... I know what some of you younger viewers are thinking. You watch, you watch, um, you watch the old original Slapshot and you think those guys are too slow to play professional hockey. That's how professional hockey was played in America and in, well, North America. It's the Canadian National Hockey League. It was the Russians. It was that Russian coach who invented fast hockey that we're all used to seeing today. We're all playing Russian hockey. We're all playing Russian hockey. And really, that coach in the 1980 Olympics, he he was the first one to coach American players to play that way. That's why a lot of players didn't make the team. They didn't want to learn to play that way. You change, you know, players are substituted. You get out there and you play full speed the whole time. You watch Slapshot and you watch these old, you can watch old videos of hockey from the 70s, NHL hockey. It's very slow game compared to today's game. Yeah, Anthony, my thing about those old movies is if it's a boring movie, turn the sound off and just watch the cinematography. Speaking of which, well, I've got you all here. I've be, it's, I'm, now I'm in this groove where I'm watching um, Double Indemnity every night. I usually fall asleep watching it. Watch that movie. It's, it's not film noir in terms of cinematography, but they're beginning to do it. They're little subtle hints right? There's that. That movie is so weird. It is not like any movie before or since with Barbara Stanwyck and Edward G. Robinson. And Edward G. Robinson's boss, the president of the insurance company, he's just had that Southern accent. He's really good. He has a very small part and he's very good in it. He played on My Three Sons, but he started off playing heavies. And before I forget, 
before I forget, there's at least one movie on YouTube right now where Hugh Beaumont played a Sam Spade type detective. Wisecracking, tough as nails. It's so bizarre. And in this movie, all the heavies, all the hoods are scared of him because he's so tough. Hugh Beaumont. Fred McMurray plays an insurance salesman. And he has this kind of, you know, one of those father-son relationships, like Smoking the Bandit or whatever, with the claims investigator of the insurance company he works for. And they write all kinds of policies. And don't let me, don't let me end the YouTube free stream until I tell you about this English there's a movie about an English insurance adjuster from the same period of time, totally different movie. Fred McMurray plays an insurance salesman and he meets this sociopath. I'm be I become fascinated with what movies used to think habitual liars were. And then you start to see some of these artists, these writers and these filmmakers, they begin to catch on before psychologists do. They... Freud said he got he learned everything from Shakespeare and 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 Homer or, or you know Sophocles and these guys that they had it already figured out. They had the human mind figured out. You watch Barbara Stanwyck play an early movie version of a sociopath because it's a movie. There are scenes in that movie where it's like, yes, that's a sociopath. Audiences had never seen this kind of thing before. And this was this movie was made in 44. And Barbara Stanwyck plays this ruthless sociopathic woman. I've mentioned a few other film noirs that have, okay, but the modern the really modern understanding of a sociopath, as opposed to the older you know, the, the the killer who kills for the, the thrill killer, the kills. No, she's a sociopath. I'm not giving away any spoilers. You know what the movie's about. You, you know in advance what the movie's about. This insurance salesman plots with this sexy blonde to bump off her husband. I saw this all the time, and it was just, it was 50-50. Women bumping off their husbands, husbands bumping off their wives for the insurance money. We saw this all the time. Well, not all the time. I worked in the, in the, it was called Large Claims Office. It was investigation. So, um, so you have Barton Keyes as the father figure. You have Fred McMurray who plays um, Walter. Walter, the insurance salesman. And the whole thing, well, first of all, the first thing he does, the first thing you see in the movie is you see Fred McMurray sit down at a dictaphone and confess, and he confesses to Edward G. Robinson, the claims investigator. And that movie, there's a scene, there's a scene. I can't play live, I can't, I can't show it to you live on YouTube. I can show it to you live on that thing where he talks about suicide. They got suicide broken down by time of day, by race, by really, he, and he, he goes through this act. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. You know exactly what's going to happen because he confesses at the very beginning of the movie. Well, why, why did, why did this guy do this? And I become obsessed with this movie. Barbara Stanwyck, I think was an underrated actress. She'd been a big star on Broadway. She's very sexy, beautiful. She was a dancer. She's one of the first modern dancers. She moves like a dancer. Like she had this weird walk because she was short and she'd wear these high heels. She had this long, she would take these really long strides the way only a dancer can do. And she plays this professional wife who marries this guy. Now, the money's not coming in and he's not spoiling her. And he, he has this grown daughter and he she lives with them. He wants to get rid of them. And these, there are plot reveals that come along, but there are things in the movie that the audience didn't get at the time that I've read about. Her character wears this wig. 
it's a it's a wig from a movie from the 30s or late 20s like maybe silent film it was a very famous movie this very famous actress wore this wig in this movie barbara stanwick is wearing this wig but it's not supposed to be the character's natural hair the character wears this wig and that's your first clue of how fake she is but there are scenes like the money shot that I'm always talking about. I don't want to give you too many spoilers because the movie's worth watching. But there's this scene where Barbara Stanwyck is sitting in this, she's sitting in this high back armchair, like a doll that's been tossed into the corner of the, because because she, she, you watch Barbara Stanwyck in the movie, she's super conscious of all of her physical movements because she's a dancer. It's amazing. It's amazing. You watch little things. The only time she ever smiles is when the conversation is about her and she brightens up immediately. She's a goddamn sociopath. Another thing is the outrageous flirting that goes on in those movies from the 30s and, and, the, and getting into the 40s. And it's all, it's all very subtle. It's all very code words. It's all innuendo. My parents and their friends, that generation, those World War II people, they did flirt like that all the time with friends, with in-laws, with strangers. My parents would flirt with each other. For f It was a game they all learned to play. It was like their hacky sack. It was like their, you know what I mean? They all did it all the time. <laughs> and they learned when they were teenagers growing up coming of age how to how to lovers act they learned from these movies it's all about you're flirting but it's very subtle it's all innuendo it's all double entendre it's all it's all puns it's all that and you see that go on in this movie and you see her like a robot trying to figure out what this guy's all about this movie's brilliant, and I just watch it over and over and over again. And what's interesting is there are no, there's no sympathetic character in the movie, except maybe Edward G. Robinson, who's disappointed in Fred McMurray. There's no likable character anywhere. Not the husband who gets bumped off. Not the daughter. It, it's... I walked with a zombie. They took some of those movies pretty certain cat people, right? Those British, those British uh, cult movies about cults and about modern day witches. Those are really good. I mean, The Wicker Man is a great movie. If you went back in time and watch, watch. If you watched what people believed about Jesus and these resurrection gods back in the ancient world, it's it is The Wicker Man. The Wicker Man is beautiful. The Wicker Man is a great movie about ancient pagan religions. It's beautiful. The Seventh Victim? Have you ever seen the 13th? Is it the 13th Dinner Guest? That movie's hilarious. <laughs> it's about, there were these kids who were present at this big dinner that took place in this manor house. They were all nieces and nephews, whatever, and they're thinking back and they're trying to remember what happened and there was a murder that took place. I don't want to give you any spoilers. Is it the 13th dinner guest, the 12th dinner guest, the 11th dinner guest? That movie's hilarious. It's like the first Clue. I think Clue, Clue borrowed a lot from that movie. Strange Love of Martha Ivers, right? The file on Thelma Jordan. Laura. Or is it the eyes of Laura Moore? I think it's Laura. This detective is investigating the murder of a woman he never met and he falls in love with her. Well, E.V., there was certainly a lot going on in those days, that generation of filmmakers. Remember, movie was a brand new medium. So look at what they were able to achieve in just a few years and playing around with this technology. Look what they were able to create. And the studio system, it's a factory. They're cranking out movies every... So if, the, the, if any time a masterpiece got made, it's, you know, 
They're just cranking out movies, and sometimes a masterpiece would get made. Oh, Billy Wilder? Yeah. The thing is, Anthony, there's no other movie like it. There's really no other movie quite like this movie. If you think about what their plan is and how they try to execute it, they have this thing where they meet at this grocery store, which I think it's almost like the store that 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 um, Lino LaBianca inherited from his father. It's on La, Los Feliz Boulevard. And you're looking at it going, is that is that the grocery store? They meet there. They're supposed to be meeting there incognito like two strangers wandering around this market she goes there every day at 11 o'clock in case he happens to show up and they meet and they try to talk <laughs> now it's not as far out as night of the hunter which is it's almost that's almost like a psychedelic movie night of the hunter the only movie that Charles Lawton was ever allowed to direct, and there'd never been anything quite like it. It's not as far out as that, but it's as, it's kind of far out like that. Double Indemnity, it's not like The Postman Always Rings Twice. That's a great movie. Um, That victim is very sympathetic. But you think about, you know, like, we're going to move to Canada. We're going to move to the Yukon and live with my parents. And like she's like, I'm not doing this. But instead of divorcing the guy, what do they do? And, of course, you have um, John Garfield, who's a different type of star from Fred McMurray. So I grew up watching Flubber and My Three Sons. So to see Fred McMurray play a guy, and his excuse for doing it is interesting. And he confesses. He doesn't confess to the police. He doesn't confess to the orphaned daughter. He confesses to the claims investigator. Now, while I'm thinking of it, there's a, a British movie from the 40s on YouTube. Let me check my YouTube history. About an insurance investigator who gets in way over his head. It starts off slow and... It's one of those movies like like North by Northwest is great because if you look at these bizarre things that keep happening to Jimmy Stewart out of the clear blue sky and suddenly he's in this situation, that movie is so ridiculous it just keeps you hanging on the edge of your seat. And it's hilarious because the, this movie is a lot like that. This guy, he's like he slips on a banana peel and falls into a puddle that has no bottom. It's great. What is this movie called? Let me find my history. I'm on the wrong... It's eternal... It's eternal something. Now, where's my history? Where's my history? History. There's a Marshall McLuhan documentary we're going to watch some night. It's not, it won't count. It'll have to be a premium episode, but it won't count against your quota of premium episodes. It's about Marshall McLuhan. I finally found the complete documentary. That guy was way over everybody's head. He's still over everybody's head. Okay, history. Where's my history? See all history. The Anderson Tapes is on YouTube. That's a movie that's all, it's about, that movie is saturated with this idea of 24-hour surveillance, and it's, it's, it's everybody surveying everybody. It's called The Anderson, with, it, it's, it's, Sean Connery, in some ways, it's his best movie. He's actually playing a person. Guy get out of prison, and they're going to rob they're gonna. There's this luxury apartment building, like the Dakota or whatever. They're just gonna clean the place out, him and his gang. But there's in the background of all this, when he gets out of prison and he goes to get his driver's license, watch. There's surveying. The whole movie's told. Almost the whole movie's told through surveillance cameras and microphones and everything. It's called the Anderson tapes. 
Watch the Anderson tapes. The Conversation is a great movie, but the Anderson tapes is just full blown. Um, they got the complete Basil Rathbone Sherlock Holmes movies up. I like those. They're not too long. They don't drag them out. They're 110 minutes long, maybe. No, I mean, no, they're like, no, they're like 70, 70, 75 minutes long. Oh, and there's a movie we'll watch. We're not going to watch. We're going to watch a scene from a movie. People want, what's it like to be a photojournalist? And this movie is, it's like a documentary. It was some B-film noir. What's this one? I can't read any of these titles. You don't need to see all my watch history. <laughs> okay, here we go. Some of these I haven't seen yet. The Spiral Staircase is on YouTube. The Complete Walter Lippert. Directed by the Newfield Brothers, written and directed by the New... They're the first Cohen Brothers, Sam Newfield and Neuf Neufeld. They were actually brothers. Double Jeopardy with Rod Cameron is up. Uh, I could, I could f put these movies on a playlist. I think it does you more good to Google things on your own and you'll learn things that I didn't tell you. There, how's that for an excuse for laziness? Lloyd Bridges and Secret Service Investigator. Fly by Night, Shoot to Kill. The Crooked Way, Pay to Kill. Oh, there's a really good one. It's like the one of the very far, maybe I mentioned this. The assassin or the assassination. That was an interesting. I know I mentioned it before. The caretaker, Donald Pleasance. You see why Donald Pleasance got famous as an actor in The Caretaker. The October Man, haven't seen that one yet. The Upturned Glass. Oh, The Upturned Glass with James Mason? It's okay. After what we learned about James Mason, it's okay not to like James Mason. And you don't have to like him in this movie, but he's damn good. It's called The Upturned Glass. No spoilers. No spoilers. Watch how this movie starts. And it goes, it gets crazy. Called The Upturned Glass. Starring James Mason. Yeah, that movie got better and better and better. And those British movies, they start slow and they'll get better and better and better and better and better and better. <laughs> Some American movies, they try to start off with a big punch right away. Right? Mystery 3000 is, you got a 24 hour feed on youtube just ad supported and now they have alf going 24 hours a day on youtube and the the 24 hour day misty 3000 that includes cinematic titanic it includes all the reboot episodes all of them highway dragnet highway dragnet that's another one of those movies where a guy just he slips a little bit, and it just keeps falling and falling and falling. Yeah, Bunny Lake is Missing. That's a fascinating movie. Where the hell did it go? Eternal something. The Informers. Now, it should be at the top of my... 
search history eternal something. No? Search search what's history? Eternal Eternal Intrigue. There that's not a very illuminating title. Why it's on YouTube. Let me post the link right now. It's called Eternal Intrigue. I guess I could have put the name on it. Great cast. This is this movie gets more interesting every minute. Like it's really good. It's a British film noir. Oh, I, I, I meet more and more young people who love watching old movies. Yeah, McMurray always played bad guys, and it, I don't know if he was ever, he wasn't really believable. So I started casting him as good guys, and he really took off as a star. The Lady Eve, yeah. Well, she starred in the Broadway version of Burlesque. <laughs> That's how she got to be. Um, and those dresses, they don't, th those silkworms are extinct. They think they might be able to bring them back with, with genetic engineering, but that kind of silk isn't made anymore. The kind of silk that she wears in her movies. Look at the suits. Look at the clothes that she wears in Double Indemnity. Any woman, I mean, you know, the first lady, anybody could wear those clothes today. Her her fashion was always way ahead of its time. She had a very um, she had a very distinctive style, and it's you still wear that stuff today. Wormwood Star, you gotta you gotta re read between the lines, because he didn't want to hear anything about the cult at all. Now he doesn't like me. Do not mention my name. The caretakers of Harold Pinter play, yeah. The one, well, there's some Barbara Stanwyck movies you haven't seen. They're on YouTube. One is called, one of the, her very first movies is Night Nurse. That's a pre-code movie. That's a, and it's one of Clark Gable's very first movies. You know, we're talking about the Lindbergh baby kidnapping and these chauffeur, bodyguards, bootlegger. That's who he plays in this movie. They, they're, that story sounds an awful lot like what probably happened in the Lindbergh baby kidnapping case. It's called Night Nurse. She's in another one, Babyface. That's another pre-code movie. That movie, John Wayne's first on first speaking part. He plays an office boy in a robo foreclosing bank. Well, you got to watch you got to watch Babyface. That's that's a very modern movie and it's a great movie. But you, but I read it, Gary, just because it, everything it was like, click, 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 light bulbs just kept going off because, um, yeah, Alf was a pretty, pretty cool show. But the guy who wrote for Alf, that's the one, Permanent Midnight, right? The heroin addicted Hollywood writer. Oh, about the way, well, the way Mason Ray, you didn't see any of the episodes about Michelle Phillips and her friends and her dad. You didn't see any of those. They're on the premium channel. You've got to catch up. Video drums about McLuhan, maybe probably inspired by him, probably was. Max Headroom was inspired by Marshall McLuhan. Borderline with Fred McMurray? Yeah. Yeah. There's no other movie quite like Double Indemnity. Not quite like the remake is? No. Why? I was one of those movies I just get more and more fascinated with. Think about what Fred McMurray does in that movie. 
Think about where the camera is focused during that scene. And she's the first, it's the first movie I've ever seen where you get, you get either, they're either a sociopath or, or diso dissociative identity where the mask comes down and the person's just kind of stone cold mask. You hear about it in the movie Anatomy of a Murder. You hear about a soldier, he's got severe PTSD from Korea and um, again, that's not a spoiler. He he shoots a guy over his wife, and the way it's described, it's it's that dissociative identity disorder where he goes into combat mode and his conscious mind is just put to sleep, while the rest of his brain takes over and makes sure he survives. And now he comes back to civilian life, and he's got a he's got a hair trigger temper, and that's played by one of the greatest actors of all time, whose name I can't remember. John Garfield's one of those actors I've really learned to appreciate. He play all these different parts. He was with charisma. He plays gangsters with charisma. He plays heroes with charisma. He got that charisma. Um, he's in The Big Lebowski. He plays Jackie Treehorn. <laughs> I get so lost in his characters, I forget the actor's name. Christopher Walken's first movie? Eternal Sunshine and Spotlight. My, that, those are okay. I think Andy, or whatever, Bradley Coff, whatever his name, I think he's a little overrated. I think the movies are overrated. He might have been brilliant. Charlie Kaufman might have been brilliant, but the movies, the finished product is overrated. Just like Jim Jarmusch. His, the, we actually sat down and watched a Jim Jarmusch movie. They're wildly overrated. But Dead Man is pretty good. Dead Man's pretty good. There's one more Barbara Stanwyck movie. Um, you have to see. It's amazing what she could do. Um, I'll think of it in a minute. Oh, she's in Atlas Shrugged. <laughs> it's Barbara Stanwyck and Gary Cooper, right? Atlas Shrugged. She's in Atlas Shrugged. Um, yeah, when you watch Double Indemnity, you have one of the great, one of the great iconic platinum blondes, a natural blonde who was ever born, right? She was actually blonde. Why did you put her in a wig? Why do you put her in this old ratty wig? When you watch Double Indemnity, think about where that character got that wig. Oh, he very much was a big fan of Kenneth Anger. Spencer Cansaw is a big fan of Kenneth Anger. Big fan of Kenneth Anger. It was really through his worship of Kenneth Anger that he got access to all these people and information about Cameron. Yeah, he doesn't care for me in the slightest. Ben Gazzara. Ben Gazzara. There's one other Barbara Stanwyck movie. You know, I, uh, anyway, but what a fantastic actress. The clothes she wears in the big valley, any woman could go to Texas, you'd wear those clothes today. There's one more movie she's in. But Night Nurse and um, Babyface, those are two incredible movies. Sorry, Wrong Number with Burt Lancaster. Brighton Rock is a good Brit Noir. Is it on YouTube? Being John Malkovich, it was really cool. Charlie Coppin talked about how John Malkovich really was the producer and director of that movie. Like, he just kept things going and told people, you need to think about this and you need to think about that. He Like, he just couldn't stop raving about John Malkovich's participation in that movie. 
Force of Evil. Oh, John Garfield. I don't think he made a bad movie. Oh, The Fountainhead. Is it? Which, whatever. Whatever. The Fountainhead's about the architect, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, She's in one more movie. Oh, A Christmas in Connecticut. Have you ever seen that movie? She plays Martha Stewart. She plays Martha Stewart of the Saturday in the, in the magazine days. She has this homemaking column in, in the Saturday Evening Post, basically. And her publisher, she, now she's got this newborn baby at home. And the publisher says, I got a great idea. The sponsors are all behind it. We're going to spend Christmas at your house this year. And you're far, this is one of these classic Christmases at your Connecticut farmhouse. She's not married. She's not even married, let alone have a baby. She doesn't know how to cook. She doesn't know how to do jack shit. And now the whole world, radio is going to be there. They're going to bring a, a newsreel, you know, a, a, a film crew to this house for Christmas. Have you seen this movie? <laughs> it's called Christmas in Connecticut. One of the best movies ever made. <laughs> she could play anything. She could play anything. Yeah, that's it. Christmas and maybe I better get the premium live stream going. <clears throat> so here's Yeah, so the that so Anthony, if you haven't seen those episodes about the mamas in the body and about Michelle Phillips, you need to watch those anyway. So those of you who are Premium, I'm going to stay on YouTube for a second. Let me get the new, it, it, you know, we got a couple months. But when you go there, okay, you're going to see this. Right now, beneath the, beneath the premium stream that's playing, our player we've had for a while, you see that? Okay. I'm on here now. See this? You don't, to keep you, to keep it from burning up your bandwidth when you're not noticing, I'll have to tell you, okay, but instead of refreshing your screen like you have to do with Restream, you should be able to click where it says try again. Don't click it yet. Wait till I, t I mean, there's no harm done, but you should be able, when I tell you go, you click try again and the stream starts. But it's in my, remember my custom player I was so proud of? And I can tweak that. I can tweak that. And, um, and I've learned I can, when we get it working right, then I can download the code and I can install it on my website. And right now the player is hosted on another server. It's no big deal, but I can host the player on my server, just like the live chat is hosted on my server, not anybody else's server. Then we will be completely self-contained and we won't need anybody. <laughs> but, but that's where you're going to see, you'll, you'll click try again in just a minute. Let me get that going. And then I'll end the YouTube stream and we'll get today's premium episode going. Before I pass out from listening to myself talk all day. I heard Anne Rand was fantastic, Lay. She, she escaped the Soviet Union and came to America and was t warning everybody about communism. Nobody listened. She was dragged in front of the House Un-American Activities Committee. Now, her novels are, it's, they're turgid. They're, it's turgid prose. But she got a job as a screenwriter. She wrote some of these movies that you're bragging about. <laughs> she was hauled in front of the House on American Activities Committee for criticizing communism. People, people forget it was the lefties who started the House on American Activities Committee, not the right wing. They just took it over and used it against the lefties. But the lefties started it. How long before the live stream gets posted on the premium site? Well, as long as it takes. <laughs> Today's, I should be before I go to bed tonight. You know, it has, to, it has to process. By the way, let me know if any of you people actually use the search inside the video feature. That's what takes so long. So, um... <clears throat> so, um... Hopefully tonight. Sometimes I just, it, it slips in my mind or because I got to manually embed the link and all this other stuff. 
So, where were we? So, let me get this going. Let me get it started. This takes a minute to warm up the tubes, but that saves us a lot of money. Okay, this should be... And it's much more private and much more secure. This is even more than what I was playing with before when I built it myself. This same, they've upgraded, you know, they've rolled out. Uh, it's a lot more automated. It makes it so much easier for me, and the, and the custom player really works. You'll see. You'll be able to choose your resolution, 480, 360, or even down to 240. All that works. All the controls seem to work. And instead of having to refresh your whole browser, you should be able to click try again. But wait a minute. I haven't started doing jack squat yet. It takes a minute to get it going. But I love it. And, and it's obviously going to get. They're going to improve it every few months. And they're, they're putting up a, a paywall. I don't know about monthly subscription, but definitely, but definitely pay-per-view. If people want to do that, do you want, I'm not going to shut down my site. What I'm saying is all these, this, I wanted to know, like nobody wants to pay YouTube and then the content on YouTube is still limited. Restream has no paywall. If they would just put up a paywall, I might stick with Restream. We could make it easier for a lot of people. Cause a lot of people don't really use the features on my site. They just want to watch the episodes. But this company is upping their game. They're getting into this game. And because I'm an early adopter, I'm, we're getting these really cheap prices. Nothing wrong with Restream, but I have to pay for a premium package, which is expensive. And I'm getting a pretty big discount now. But this is going to be a lot more cost effective and it has more stuff and I have more control over stuff. And it's much more private and it is way more secure than Restream. But it takes a minute for all of this to set up and start running. But it's great. It's great. No contact. We just pay as we go. And we only pay for the exact bandwidth and, and ingest hours we actually use. Okay, now let me see. Let me start this. See if this works. <laughs> My preview view, is this working? That's streaming, that's streaming. Are we still zero dropped frames? I'm putting out multiple, multiple streams from my computer. So there may be a few glitches till I get the YouTube shut down, but so far so good. This is working great. Streaming at 480 works great. Okay. I may have to change. Nope. There I'm it putting is. out multiple, multiple. That's working. So. Okay. So when you're on the premium stream and you're looking at the new player, click try again and see what happens. Here it is. You yeah. click try again and there it is. You don't have to refresh your screen. So, okay. So when you're on the premium stream and you're looking at Where's the, the mute? Player. And this, yeah, okay. This is how it looks on the phone, which is great. And now it's muted. Come on. The cast button should be right there. Okay. If you look at the player, I can't zoom in on it on my phone. There's a cast button right there. When you bring up the, bring up the player controls, you will see when you click on the gear icon, it gives you your choice of screen resolution. Now the maximum will be 480. Or it can be set on auto. If you want to change your screen re resolution, pause the what you're watching, click on the gear icon, and then choose your screen resolution, and then click play. Okay? And then you can, there's a button to cast. There's a button for picture in picture if you want to have another app open and just have the video down in the corner of your screen. Okay? All of these buttons work.
it all works and it looks like it works pretty seamlessly and it looks great so check that out because our restream subscription expires in about eight weeks and then we'll be switching over to this i kind of like the idea that yeah i like it let me know what you think why is it freezing on my phone Okay. Great. Yeah. I think it looks gorgeous. When you bring up the... And I think the player controls are easy to see. I can tweak the look of the player and do things like that if you if you prefer. Let me know. But the, the custom player works great. And I, it's designed for me to use on a phone so I can see things. So I may I can even make those buttons bigger maybe. We'll see what happens. Okay, is that great? I'm going to leave it go for and just see how much bandwidth and stuff we actually use. So as many people as possible get signed in and start using start using the new player at the bottom and just so I can see how the bandwidth goes. Hi, Alard. Hi, Creepy Crawl. Hi, Guthrie. Hi, Johnny Rotten. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Miss Sunshine. Hi, Plastic. Hi, Sea Pines. So click try again, and it should just stream. Otherwise, you may have to refresh your screen. And then I'll get the premium show going on here in a minute. So two shovels, are you here? Can I reply to that? Do... Two shovels, if you're here, uh, check again for the show from the 8th. I forgot to... Hit the publish button last night. Yeah, we got a good turnout. Everybody click on that new custom player at the bottom. Select your resolution, whatever you like to watch. And I give me a pretty good idea budgeting every week. Because I'm, I'm budgeting it like 10 hours live streaming a week is going to be cheap. So with a, with a number of people, like if 50 people are watching. <laughs> so as many people as possible watch that. And I'll get this live stream going here in a minute i'll get the episode going here in a minute. i'll i'll leave both players playing so pause one or the other but please try the custom player that's right above the chat i can always i can tweak things you know move the chat around things like that when this all this stuff is working it seems like it's really working so here we go um thank you very much youtube have a great day if you're not Get signed up to the premium channel for crying out loud. <laughs> You're missing a lot. Okay, so goodbye, YouTube. Hello, history. Let me see if it will start again. <sighs> Hi, Dave. You're just in time to miss me. Get logged into the premium, like you're, I know you're subscribed. Go to the premium site and check out the, right above the premium chat, there's the custom player is working again. We're testing that today. So check that out. Okay, now I'm going to end the YouTube streams.